What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here. Today we're going to be talking about product and system icons and talking about why they're different and the distinctions between them and we'll go over also the principles around how icons are made in material design. Just we're going to briefly go over that and then we're also going to be using a tool that you'll use throughout the course where if I go ahead and select on this link here in our exercise file material design icons I can go ahead and click that checkbox and click on the link and you'll notice that we have this resource for actually accessing these icons so for in this exercise file I've went ahead and imported some but not all of the system icons in material design and I did that on purpose because I want you to be able to do this yourself and not only do this yourself but understand how to utilize two ways of doing so so in your exercise files you'll have a zip folder called material design icons and in this folder there is a set of icons for Android uh, for developing for Android so if you're designing for Android uh, you have these icons here available in their proper format as you can see in the .xml file format and also we have the font based version of these icons and then we have the iOS based versions and then we also have them exported as PNGs at all sizes all, all different sizes and from 18 dips 24 36 and 48 dips at 1x and 2x respective to each size as you can see there and this is very helpful but also this is a lot of material in this file um, so if that seems to be too much for you you can actually go ahead and use this resource here again this resource can be accessed by clicking on this material design icons link in figma and opening that and it'll give you access to this amazing resource that we'll both be using as we build out components in this course just in case we've missed some icons here in Figma from my initial export as you can see I have these icons categorized visually and not only that in the layers panel they are uh, as they are exported these are the names of each icon which is great so we don't have to go ahead and label those ourselves but we can also tweak the naming later on if we'd like to um, maybe we want to get get rid of those underscores and we'll get to that when we actually publish these components to utilize across our designs and here we have uh, a set of 10 categories um, user actions uh, icon font icons icons specific to devices so here you can see that, that this is definitely heavily used in Android and iOS uh, devices here indicating the state of batteries uh, airplane mode whether it's on or off or if you've set alarms or if your Bluetooth is enabled connected or disabled and other things of that nature and that is this device category and then we have some other categories such as um, some editor icons which you can see commonly used in other uh, in Google products like Google Docs like some of these are options when you select text and edit them in terms of alignment here are some alignment icons and whatnot also some hardware icons uh, content icons uh, file icons and some other icons such as communication and alert icons and again this is only touching on the surface of icons because in this tool there's an important functionality under this themes category in the top left uh, you'll see that there are different variants of all these icons so there's the filled version and there's the outline version there and you'll notice that the um, this filled version be, is definitely different from the outline version um, you can utilize these two versions of the same icon to indicate state and there's also a rounded version of these icons where the corners are much more rounded as you can see here compared to the outlined variant elements become more rounded and smooth you could say we also have this two-tone variant you'll notice that there is this second tone of color implemented that is a sort of light gray as the background color on several elements in the interface and then we have our sharp uh, variant of icons where the corners are most definitely very much sharp on the edges and whatnot so with those variants in mind we can also toggle the categories uh, specific specifically actions or if I only want alerts to appear 
or only AV icons to appear or only communication icons to appear. So basically you have the ability to view all of these icons individually or view all of them at once as there are a ton of icons. I recommend you kind of just skimming through this, understanding what you think you will and won't use and why. Um, that'll be a good testament to uh, your understanding of material design and the icons needed when we develop the component library moving forward. And again, if we don't have these in our Figma file, don't worry about it. If it's not here already, we can go ahead and just create a new category here. Uh, and of course, say I don't have icons in the from the social category, as there are a lot of social icons, it's as simple as just clicking on this icon and then in the bottom left-hand corner you'll, in your browser, you'll notice that you have the ability to actually export this icon and it tells you what size you would be exporting it as and what format. So this is the SVG based format of this icon and I can also click on that uh, to open up this, this panel and you can either download the SVG format or the PNG based format. We're gonna be sticking to the SVG based formats and there's also some instructions on how to style your icons using CSS. It gives you a little example here. Um, and you can also change the size at which you download this SVG. We'll be downloading them in 24 dips. So, and you can also get the black version of the icon or the white version of the icon. We're gonna stick with the black version of the icon as we'll be designing for light theme and our content such as typography and icons will be dark as opposed to light. And you also can download the iOS based version, the Android based version of this. And again, you have all these icons already in your, your in your exercise files that you've downloaded under, you can get them under a source or whatever uh, device you are designing for. You have all of these icons here in all formats, the outline round sharp and two tone variants and the filled variant as well. So with that being said, we can go ahead and talk about uh, now that we talked all about system icons, which is what we just covered, we just covered all the system icons, again, which is also in this documentation here, which will be accessible in the Figma file as well. I'll make sure that's in there so you can click on this link. So basically this symbolizes common actions for files, devices, and directories. And the whole concept is to be simple, modern, friendly, and sometimes quirky as each icon is reduced to its minimal form expressing essential characteristics for the action you're trying to take with that design element the icon is associated with. And you can see if you were to create your own icons as well, it teaches you how to even create icons with the proper parameters uh, in regards to the construction of the file, utilizing the specifications of the grid and keyline shapes here, and how to use them on dense layouts, or and just the layout of the icon itself, which is really interesting, and also just other uh, specs as well in regards to breaking down what an icon consists of, and discussing color as well, and the states for an icon, and we have these icon states on light background specified here, which is great. And we can incorporate that into our system moving forward. And it talks about the variants as well, the icon themes, which we had went over in the tool here, the themes being filled, outlined, rounded, two-tone, and sharp. And that is all discussed here in system icons. And we have now we can also play with them in Figma if you'd like. You can go ahead and click on them, copy, paste them, throw them into components. But we'll do that with much more attention moving forward when we start building out our component library. And I recommend you going through this and reading it, uh, taking notes as this will definitely inform you on how to utilize icons in a systematic way and also just up your game as a designer. So with that being said, we can go ahead and discuss product icons now. So product icons are separate from system icons because these are this is the visual expression of a brand's product and the services and tools that they offer so for example in google chrome uh, if you have a google account or a gmail account you'll notice that these are product icons these aren't system icons like like uh, like in this browser these are system icons which are crafted for common actions and items on an interface whereas these product icons here represent the product itself the service or the tool so that is something important to denote or to 
uh, apply distinction to. Because if we go back and talk about the product icons, it talks about how it expresses um, that product and how it's associated to the company it's made by. Um, so here you can see that being spoken of here, where the icons in this regard, Gmail, Google Calendar, and a, and a couple other icons, uh, communicate the core, core idea and intent of a product in a simple, bold, and friendly way, while each icon is still distinct and all product icons for a brand should be unified through those concepts and, and in its execution. And here you can see the approach where they actually view their design as uh, material being uh, a physical quality such as paper where, where each piece was cut, folded, and lit and it utilizes light as well in association to the icon and represented in this digital format uh, to really bring out those surfaces to interact with light. And, and you can see the subtle highlights here and the consistent shadowing applied in these product icons. So if we go ahead and go back to Google's suite of product icons here, you can see that in the Gmail icon and you can see the, the shadows being applied here on these edges and lighting um, really being implemented, uh, executed consistently in all product icons. And you can get specifications on how these icons are built and whatnot, but this isn't super specific to what we'll be doing, but I highly recommend you go through it. If you ever want to develop your own icons in the future, this is very helpful. It talks about how to treat icons, and how they should be flush with an element surface, etc., etc., um, and how to apply proper attention to an icon by not convoluting the icon with excessive um, accordion folds, for example, in this scenario where you see these accordion folds where it looks like this paper is folding or this icon is folding, as opposed to having too many accordion folds, utilize uh, no more than two accordion folds or just one um, to really n provide a clear focal point to your icon. And of course, not distorting or transforming your icons, whether they are product or system icons, as that is not an intended uh, approach to designing. So that is pretty much all I have for you today on product icons. Um, I recommend you just kind of practicing, clicking on one of these, uh, downloading it as an SVG, and then saving it in a folder somewhere that makes sense for you. And again, you already have these icons, but I recommend getting into the habit of this as well because maybe I'm missing an icon here and we can save that SVG. I can go ahead and open up Figma and access the downloads folder in my finder and just drag this icon onto the canvas. And now that I have this icon, which is actually already here, you'll notice that I have the filled version of this icon as it states here. Uh, so I got the 3D rotation icon at a frame size of 24 by 24. The width and height is set to 24 dips, or in this case, uh, pixels, or as Figma calls it, points. But not to confuse you there, just call them dips here in reference to material design's uh, measurement terminology. And that is it. You just add it. You can add it into your library and organize it accordingly. And I will go ahead and continue to build this library out as well as we move forward in this course. Um, but that is all I have for you when it comes to talking about iconography. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.